Alcohols are an organic functional group that has a hydroxyl group, or OH group, directly bonded to a carbon. When we name alcohols, we change the suffix part of the organic name from E to OL. We can indicate the position of the hydroxyl group in the carbon chain with a number, although we only do this if it's necessary. If we have both functional groups and substituents, the functional group, in this case the hydroxyl group, gets numbering priority over substituents. Functional groups such as the hydroxyl groups also get numbering priority over pi bonds such as alkenes or alkynes. Let's look at a few examples of alcohols and see how to name them. We can start by differentiating between these two molecules, ethane and ethanol. We notice that with ethanol, we do not use a number to indicate where the hydroxyl group is located because no matter which carbon it is on, that will be automatically the first carbon. We also notice that we dropped the E from the name ethane and we replaced it with the suffix OL since we have a hydroxyl group. In this molecule, we have a five carbon carbon chain and the hydroxyl group is bonded to the second carbon from the right. We would name this pent for the five carbons in the chain, an since all the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds, and we'd add the suffix ol since we have a hydroxyl group functional group. We would add a two in front since a hydroxyl group is bonded to the second carbon. In this example, we have both a chloro substituent and a hydroxyl group for the functional group. It's important to remember that functional groups, like hydroxyl groups, take numbering precedence over substituents, like halogen atoms. In this case, we would start numbering from the right, since this gives us a lower number for the hydroxyl group. The name of this compound would then be 4-chloro-2-pentanol. In this cyclic compound, we have an ethyl substituent, a methyl substituent, and a hydroxyl functional group on the 6-carbon ring. Since it's a 6-carbon ring, we would name it cyclohexan, and we add the suffix ol for the hydroxyl group. We would not need a number, since in a ring, by definition, the functional group is on the first carbon. We would then number around the ring in the direction that gives the methyl and ethyl substituents the lowest total numbers. In this case, we number clockwise. So the methyl is on the second carbon, and the ethyl is on the fifth carbon. The name of this compound would then be 5-ethyl-2-methyl-cyclohexanol. In previous videos, we learned about amine functional groups as organic compounds that have a nitrogen bonded to a carbon. We also learned how to distinguish between primary, secondary, and tertiary amines, as indicated in these images. Right now, we want to learn how to name amine functional groups. We're going to use the same substituent, prefix, infix, suffix system that we've used for other organic compounds. In this case, the suffix will change from an E for hydrocarbons to amine for amine functional groups. As with other functional groups, we need to use a number to indicate the location of the nitrogen on the main carbon chain as long as it's unclear where that nitrogen can be. We'll also learn that the amine has a higher priority than substituents and pi bonds, but if we have both an alcohol and an amine, the alcohol has higher numbering priority than the amine. For secondary and tertiary amines, the other carbon groups on the nitrogen are named as substituents located at the N. Let's look at a few examples to demonstrate these rules. In this first example, we have a two-carbon chain with an NH2 group bonded to one of the carbons. We would name this ethanamine, where the amine suffix has replaced the E for the hydrocarbon. We do not need a 1, since, by definition, whichever of the two carbons that nitrogen is bonded to will be the first carbon. In the second example, 
we have a chlorine substituent group and an amine functional group. Since the amine takes priority for numbering, we would number from right to left, and the name of this compound would be 3-chloro-2-butanamine. In this third example, we have both an alcohol and an amine functional group. As indicated previously, the alcohol gets numbering priority and so in this case we would number from left to right. The amine group would now be named as a substituent and it would have the name am amino. This compound would then be named 3-amino-2-butanol. In this last example we have a secondary amine because the nitrogen is directly bonded to two other carbons. The five carbon chain would be the main carbon chain, and so this would have the prefix pent. The amine group is on the second carbon, so this is a two pentanamine, and then we notice that we have a methyl substituent bonded to the nitrogen, and we also have a methyl substituent on the fourth carbon. We would name this carbon N, comma, 4 dimethyl 2 pentanamine. Ethers are a type of organic functional group that has an oxygen bonded to two separate carbon atoms. When we name ethers, we can use two different systems. The first, or the common names for ethers, involves naming the two alkyl groups on either side of the oxygen and then adding the word ether. The two different alkyl groups are named alphabetically. In this case, we would name this first molecule ethyl methyl ether. The second molecule we could name dimethyl ether. The systematic names for ethers involves identifying the longest carbon chain as if it were an alkane and then adding the other substituent with an oxy instead of a YL. In this case, Instead of naming this ether ethyl methyl ether with a common system, the systematic name would be methoxyethane. In the second example, we have an ethyl group on one side of the oxygen and a six carbon chain on the other side of the oxygen. We would name the six carbon chain as a hexane and then the oxygen with the ethyl group would be an ethoxy attached to the third carbon, so the systematic name for this ether would be 3-ethoxyhexane. There is another type of ether known as epoxides. In this case, the oxygen is part of a three-membered ring with two carbon atoms. For the simplest epoxides, the compounds are named as alkenes with the word oxide added afterwards. A more systematic way to name epoxides is to name the carbon chain as an alkane and to add an epoxy prefix as a substituent and then we add numbers to indicate the carbons in the chain that are bonded to the oxygen. Using this systematic process, this first example with four carbons and the oxygen bonded to the first and second carbons would be named 1,2-epoxybutane. In the second example, with a three-membered ring and a methyl substituent on the second carbon, we would name this 1,2-epoxy-2-methylpropane.